All right, we're talking fuel from space this morning. An Eastern Michigan graduate is making moves beyond planet Earth, helping supply satellites to fuel up in space. And joining us this morning to talk more about OrbitFab is co-founder Jeremy Scheel. And uh, Jeremy, thanks for being here. This is, uh, th this is incredible, so many levels. I want to start off because I have so many questions about how this works, but tell us about OrbitFab and what it is first. Yeah, so OrbitFab, we are building gas stations in space essentially a network of fuel depots in low Earth orbit and in geosynchronous orbit to supply fuel to satellites that are running low. So where does this start in your brain? Yeah. Where, where, was it, I mean, as a kid, were you just fascinated with this stuff? And then, and then take us through your, your, uh, you know, your process at, at EMU, too. Yeah, so as a kid, I've always been fascinated with space. You know, I remember going to planetariums and doing the Hubble deep field fly through and just having my mind blown and realizing, like, this is what I want to do with my life. And so it, in university, I had this project that I was always working on. I called it Human Objective, and it was essentially a 500-year roadmap to colonize an asteroid. And I kind of threaded all of my business classes through this to make it work. Awesome. Um, and then ended up uh, applying for an internship with a space company out in California. And they, uh, they got back to me saying that they could use some help. And that's where I met my co-founder. So, okay, so we're refueling in space. Um, <laughs> I still am like, I'm trying to figure out where, where you begin. First off, why do you think we need these gas yeah. stations, so to speak, in space? Yeah, well, it's the same reason we need to refuel our cargo ships, our planes. You know, you can do more with expensive assets. If you can imagine buying, you know, a 30 to $100 million Ferrari and your last trip of your first fuel tank is to the junkyard and you have to buy another one, yeah. uh, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so for any economy, whether it be on Earth or in space, to expand and thrive, you need this reliable fuel source. And that just hasn't existed in the space industry. And so when we started, you know, we were only talking with customers, you know, asking, like, what could you do with more fuel? Is this something that you would need? And, you know, after getting, you know, yes, this is what we need, we'd see over a million dollars of revenue for every kilogram you could get us. After just hearing that over and over and over again, we, we knew we had a business here. How does it work, too? So do you just, you have like a pod that's just floating around in space, or take us through the, how, how yeah. it actually works? So we have um, two, two vehicles. We have a fuel tanker, which is a big tank of fuel, and then we have what we call a fuel shuttle. And the fuel shuttle will go from the tanker to our customer to deliver the fuel. And what I have here is the, the RAFTI, the Rapidly Attachable Fluid Transfer Interface. Love acronyms. And so you know, the space industry loves acronyms. <laughs> and so our customers fly this on the outside of their satellite. We'll have a few QR codes around there to aid with our docking process. And then our shuttle will come up, dock to it, and then we'll be able to transfer fuel and then undock and they'll go on their way. So I always assumed that it was like solar panels, solar power, everything. So that's one of my favorite questions. So okay. when you get into your car, you can turn on your auxiliary power, get your AC, the radio, but you're not really gonna move anywhere. And so in space, you really need that engine to actually um, push out thrust and, and move the vehicle. So it's the same with your car. You need to have the engine on to actually move. The okay. solar panels help with like the, the radios, the payloads, and, and other things that help the satellite function, but the fuel is what makes the satellites move. So what's the next step you think for the company now? Yeah, so next step, um, you know, we are, Schedule, we have a contract with the U.S. government to supply and refuel one of the Space Force satellites in 2025. Long term on our roadmap, we actually want to uh, produce propellants in orbit, so buying lunar and asteroid mine material and turning in that into usable propellants, taking waste products from commercial space stations and using that in different ways, and really just being the bedrock for the industry to grow. This is incredible. And uh, yeah, Jeremy, really, I mean, just to take this vision and to go, and you're, you're a young guy too, just to be able to do this, uh, you know, recent graduate from, from Eastern Michigan University, just uh, incredible what you're doing, keep up the great work, and, and thanks for your insight this morning, and uh, th this is really cool space stuff to get, uh, to get people thinking too about space, space. travel yeah. and what it's going to be like in the future. Jeremy, thanks for being here. Thank you, Kevin. All right. We're